Will the Antichrist be the literal son of Satan, the biological son of Satan? How's that going to work out? Is the Antichrist going to be the incarnation of the devil? We're going to talk about the Antichrist today in a sober, responsible, biblical, and traditional way. And I'm here today with Kennedy Hall, who knows a little bit of something about that. He's the author of Terror of Demons, and he's also the warm baritone voice of my new audible book the audible version of the book antichrist and apocalypse he did a great job people listen to it already loving it kennedy hall how are you and thanks for doing the book good i'm living the dream man i just got back from the catholic identity conference no border issues living like it's 2019 it's surreal awesome well you did a great job reading the book uh i've never had anyone that I knew narrate one of my own books. So I was like, how's this going to go? I heard you do the narration for uh, Father Charles Murr's uh, Murder in the 33rd Degree. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you did a great job. And I was like, man, my own friend Kennedy could be a great fit for this because I don't have time to narrate the whole book. Yeah. And you did it. And you turned it around. It's great. And we're going to talk about some of the contents of the book today, namely the identity of the Antichrist and his relation to Satan. Is he the son of Satan? Because, you know, people see these movies like, uh, is it Damien, where he is yeah. the son of Satan? And then there's also Our Lady of La Salette, um, who says that the the Antichrist will be the son of a Hebrew nun. Maybe we'll talk about that today. Mm -hmm. And they're like, well, who's the dad? Yeah. So um, St. John of Damascus has something to say about all this. And many of the church fathers, St. Robert Bellarmine as well. And so we'll go yeah. into that. Before we do, though, uh, why don't we pray our Our Father together? And uh, Kennedy, do you want to pray the second half? Or you want me to do it all? Sure. Yep. Yeah, okay. I'll do the second half. All right, let's do it. Oremus nomini patris et filii et spiritus sancti. Amen. Pater noster quia in celi sanctificetur nomen tuum advenit regnum tuum. Fiat voluntas tua secut in cello et in terra. Panem nostrum quotidianum da nobis odie, e dimitti nobis debita nostra, sicut et nos dimittimus debitoribus nostris, e ne nos inducas in tentationem, sed libera nos amalo. Amen. Amen. Nomini Patris, Fidi, Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Amen. All right, well, let's jump into this. Yeah. Well, first off, how did you get into narrating, and what was it like narrating this book? I mean, it's a great book, right? Uh yeah, it's, it is good. Yeah, it is. Uh, actually, uh, it was really pleasurable to narrate because it was fun to read, you know, uh, so that just made it easy. Um, so I actually have to thank Father, uh, two people, Father Charles Murr and Mike Church, mutual friend Mike Church. Um, Father Mike Church asked me to host a radio show, which I did for six months on his channel, absolutely loved it. Uh, just family situation, wife was very ill, well, she was healthy, but had major uh, continual morning sickness during pregnancy. It made it impossible for me to commit um, to the time. And I was going to take lots of months off, for, you know, so I just kind of had to let it go. But I loved the show. So I learned a lot about uh, audio. I had like this radio set up in my office here with like, you know, mixers. and all this kind. I just kind of learned to do it, right, because I was all remote. So that was a big thing. I actually got a lot of practice from him. So thank you to uh, Mr. Church for doing that. Uh, I know he watches your show, so shout out if you're listening. Um, and yeah, exactly. And then Father Murr, uh, one of those kind of eccentric old priests, just kind of like, he's like 70 something now. And he's like, I see something in you, kid. I want you to do my book. And just because he saw me on some like Fatima Center video. And I said, I don't know how to do a book. I mean, I can speak in a microphone, but I'm going to have to learn and, and all the software. And he said, no problem. Take your time. I just want your voice. You're the voice. You're the voice, kid. You're the voice. So I said, okay. And then I just went to YouTube University and watched a zillion videos, uh, how to use audio software. And uh, about three months after that, I finished his book and it was great. And then by the time you came along, I was ready because I'd already done it. So now it's kind of becoming like part of my career. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, it's fantastic. So yeah, it was, I was, it was great. I remember reading the, hearing you do the first three chapters. Like, this is working. This is good. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. awesome. And yeah, the book Antichrist and Apocalypse is doing great. I was on Steve Bannon yesterday and that just, I saw uh, that. 
sent the sales through the roof. It's like number one bestseller in like four or five categories. This morning it hit number 55 in all books sold yeah. on Amazon. I know. So I that's kind I of a big deal. Ben and a copy. Yeah, yeah, it is a big deal. That's like yeah, that's Anchorman. like including the smut novels. Like you know what I mean? Like that's all the books sold. That's huge. Yeah, it's like you get above Oprah and all that and. So that's good. I mean, I was, that's thanks to, to Steve Bannon and, you know, Jack Posobiec yeah. and other people with huge followings tweeted yeah. the book and just everybody who read Infiltration, which is, you know, hundreds of thousands of people are also checking out the new book. So, yeah, I mean, Steve Bannon was like, so, I mean, he's like, what is, what's this book about? And I was like, look, there's a lot, we're in hard times. Uh, there's yeah. people coming up with all these ideas, like, Trudeau's the Antichrist, Biden's the Antichrist, uh, Francis Bergoglio's the Antichrist, and we're in the end times. I was like, look, let's just tap the brakes. There's a lot of information in the Bible on the Antichrist and the Apocalypse. There's a lot in the Church Fathers. There's a lot in the tradition. Uh, Let's actually be responsible and go line by line, you know, and just break it down. And like, what do the saints say? What does Thomas Aquinas say on these passages? What is St. Robert Bellarmine? Rep- Bellarmine does a ton on these topics. And let's get some really holy, saintly fathers of the church and go into tradition instead of like Tim LaHaye and Left Behind and Dispensationalist. And I mean, it's, it's shocking how many Catholics read this. I mean, should I call it garbage? From Protestants I mean, and, and evangelicals, yeah, yeah. and it's sort of like things that were just invented in the last 100 years. Just my take on helicopters and microchips is what it comes out to, you know? <laughs> and they missed the mark. And there's actually profound theological treatises on these topics that go back well over a thousand years. Yeah, and... You mentioned the microchips. We won't go any further, YouTube. Don't worry with, with what those refer to. But uh, these things can all be prefigurements, obviously. Like, is there something anti-Christic about a Justin Trudeau? Sure. Is there something anti-Christic about, you know, Mao or Stalin? Yeah. I mean, they want to abolish the true religion and, and kind of want themselves to be worshipped. Um that's definitely a part of the coming of the Antichrist is, you know, that's that's you, you show that in your book, but that's kind of a general principle people usually understand. Uh, um, uh, definitely uh, there will be a tribulation for the believers, you know, the, the professed Christians when that era comes. So you look around and you say, oh, my goodness, they're closing our churches. Um, you know, uh, they're, 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 they're denying all our religious exemptions to things because we have a man in the, you know, the white cassock in Rome who's not really doing us any favors. Um, so yeah, there's definitely reasons to, or, you know, hey, maybe you won't be able to access certain consumer products if you don't present certain documents that have to do with something you put on your person. You know, it sounds like the mark of the beast and you go, oh man, this is getting really crazy. But there are, as you'll, We'll we'll talk about in this episode, but when you read the book, it's it's astounding how many different um, things will have to come together Mm. where we'll know, we'll go, oh, like, honestly, if you follow your book and you bring, I mean, it's, 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 it's obviously your work, but you're just putting together the sources like, like, you know, you've been a teacher for years. You're teaching us, you're putting together sources for your students to say, Okay, now I understand this meta narrative of Antichrist, and it makes a lot of sense to me. Um, if we were to live through that time and follow your book, like it'd be very clear that we'd be in that time because we'd see, you know, these let's just call them dozen different things line up. When yeah. those things are lining up, that's where you are. Yeah, I mean, there's at least fifteen things yeah. that need to line up that are in part one of this book, Antichrist and Apocalypse, and that's yeah. you know. Yeah. A week or so ago, I I said on this podcast, King Charles III of England is an antichristic yeah. figure. Yeah, and people were like, Taylor Marshall said Charles the Third's an antichrist. I'm like, no, I just wrote a whole book that shows that he couldn't be the antichrist. And here's, I don't That's I don't right. talk about King Charles III at all in this book, but the whole idea, like you just said, Saint John the Apostle, and I we show the passages in in the book. He says there are antichrists with a lowercase a, and there is the 
capital A Antichrist, who is the man of sin, who That's is right. the beast. <laughs> he is a king. He is a world ruler. So that doesn't mean that you can't say that Muhammad, the inventor of the Islamic religion, is an Antichrist. I right. mean, St. John of Damascus says that. Many Catholics yes. have said Muhammad was an Antichrist. He wasn't the final Antichrist. He was an Antichrist. Who England, but are the head and governor of the Church of England, a world religion, a Protestant denomination. They say that they are the head and governor with the final say over that church. I'm sorry. If you put a king or a monarch over a religious body, that also is antichristic. So any it's aberration, yeah, any wandering away from the one true faith, the Catholic faith, on an institutional level is always going to be antichristic. Yeah. Well, what's what's the word mean? I mean, you go through this. You talk about how the term antichrist and pseudo Christ was has been used. So sort of false Christs, false messiahs, false apostles, pseudo, right? Pseudoscience, as people understand where that comes from. But then ultimately the term that was sort of distilled over the ages is this idea of anti because it's it more best it, it, it better encapsulates so yes you don't talk about charles charles uh the third in your book but i do talk about justin trudeau in mine as an, a, right. an example of effeminacy <laughs> so um uh you know but uh they are all against christ if you are anti this is why people get so upset historically when the church would talk about like judaism as being anti-christ and everyone's like, oh, my goodness, it's anti-Semitism, et cetera. It's like, no, like if you make the conscious decision to reject the Messiah, you're against this person who is the Messiah. You're anti this person. Um, it's, you know, so there's a difference between an anti-Christic mentality or ideology and someone being the veritable uh, anti-Christ foretold, which is a very specific thing. Right. Yeah. I'm going to read a, a passage um, from sacred scripture that makes that distinction. It's 1 John chapter 2, verse 18. And if you get the audible book, you'll hear Kennedy Hall read this verse. It's in the book. Quote, little children, <laughs> it is the last hour. And as you have heard, that Antichrist cometh. Singular. He continues, right. even now there are become many Antichrists. Plural. Whereby we know that it is the last hour. And then he says, just a little bit below that, who is a liar, but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ, this is Antichrist, whoever denies the Father and the Son. So anyone who denies the Father and the Son, yeah. Islam, Hinduism, Buddhism, yes, even Rabbinic, Talmudic Judaism, denies the Father and the Son. And anyone who denies the Father and the Son is given to the Spirit of Antichrist. It doesn't mean that that person is the Antichrist. They're given to the spirit of Antichrist. And who's the spirit of the Antichrist, as we'll see today in today's show? Satan, the devil, the deceiver, yeah. the liar, the one trying to trick every human person and consign them to hell. That's what he's trying to do. But you can see right there in 1 John 2, 18, there are Antichrists, plural, and there's the Antichrist who will appear at the end of time. And uh, we'll talk about him today. Anything you want to add to that, Kennedy? Well, I mean, I said a similar thing last year about Canada. I did this was before my show had kind of picked up any steam, and I was just ticked off one night, and I did like a stream just on my webcam called. Uh, I think it was like when they implemented like lockdown number seven or something, you know. And it was Canada is a nation of antichrist, and everyone's like, "Bro, you can't make that claim." And I'm like, "No, you understand. <laughs> They're arresting pastors." They're closing right. churches. Um, you know, Christians are getting canceled left, right, and center. I've been going through this row with the Ministry of Education because my my Catholic views and my book approved by, you know, uh, priests and tan books, which is known as being an Orthodox publisher, is somehow, like, hateful. Like, it's just Christian. Um, so the spirit of Antichrist is everywhere. And one of the um, examples of this is that... When you are very exclusive in your Christian profession, it is seen as offensive to other religions, which is a huge problem. And this is why, you know, documents from the Second Vatican Council have always been so problematic for people. 
um, you know, Nostra Tate, uh, implying that there might be a, a similarity or dignity or something like that between various religions. It's not taught, but it's implied in the way it's presented. Um, you know, uh, talking about all the good things you can find in other world religions. Sure. You can find good things in the people who are in other world religions. You know, people can be moral, the natural laws in everybody's heart. Chesterton talked about the warm paganism of sort of the Romans versus that very diabolical, mechanistic one of the Carthaginians in, that, in the wars between the two empires. Okay, you can make those sort of overarching claims about history. Um, but any religion that rejects, rejects Christ is antichrist. So ultimately, the thing can't be good. Um, so even in the church, this spirit of ecumenism fuels this idea of antichrist because they're saying, look, there's all this good religious truth found out there without the father and the son, which is wrong. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, even you, you cited Nostra Aetate. You know, Nostra Aetate claims that Buddhism has this enlightening philosophy. And we have to yeah. really ask ourselves, is that accurate? I mean, I guess they claim it. I guess... Certain apologists will say, well, they themselves claim it, but it's not real. And then that's, that kind of raises the question is like, well, why even have this document in an ecumenical council? Yeah. You know, it, it just, yeah. one of the, one of the issues with that document is that it's wrong about Buddhism and Hinduism. Like that's actually one of the problems. People will say you have to accept the Second Vatican Council. I'm like, I actually can't accept this document. Because the document's wrong about the things that, it, like, there's no charism in Catholicism for a prelate to talk about the teachings of Hinduism. This isn't like right. a matter of faith and morals, right? Like, so uh, even the way that it portrays Nirvana and Buddhism, it's like, which Buddhism? There's like 24 different kinds, you know? Right. So even just this, you know, that document itself wouldn't, it wouldn't pass an exam in a course in like upper years of university to know about Buddhism, you see. So so there's just errors even on the basic factual level. Yeah, and, and does the Holy Ghost guide the magisterium to define other world religions? I mean, the whole, the whole idea is just insane that an ecumenical yeah. council would spend time cataloging other world religions and telling us what they believe and what's good about them. It's a very awkward, yeah, it's silly. strange, strange thing. So... All right, well, why don't we jump into this uh, topic? Is, mm -hmm. will be, will the Antichrist be the son of Satan? Now, this comes from actually this misunderstanding. Actually, I would say most people you talk to about the Antichrist who are nominal or not churched or not Christian, basically all the info they have on antichrist and demons is from horror movies. Yes. They are unanimous in the belief that the antichrist will be the literal son of Satan. And their thinking is, well, Christians say Jesus is the son of God. And so that means that the antichrist who's opposed to Jesus will be the son of Satan. The problem with that is Christ our Lord was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, who was immaculate, by the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Ghost. And that is such a magnificent act of divine plenitude and power. Satan doesn't have anything close to that amount of miraculous power. He can only really sort of mirror or, or fraudulently display things that are signs and wonders, but he can't do something like the incarnation of God. He can't even do the incarnation of himself. And so no. Thomas Aquinas says, you know, that demons, including Satan, cannot become incarnate. They can reflect. Thomas Aquinas says they can uh, reflect light. They can bring yeah. together dust. Um, they can do all kinds of things to give appearances, and angels can, good angels too, and bad angels can do these kind of things too, and, and sort of manipulate some physical matter, but to actually become incarnate is not within demonic powers. Mm -hmm. I remember there's a podcast series out there called um, 
Luke 21 radio. Okay. Uh, very fascinating stuff. Um, the guy who goes through it, I tried to get in touch with him. I never did. So if he's watching this, uh, please email me back. Uh, I, a long time ago, I emailed him. But Check he does this series for Kennedy Hall. <laughs> yeah. From like five months ago. But he does this, um, he does this, uh, series as part of, he does a, a show on Catholic prophecy through the lens of St. Augustine. All right. Uh, he does this series on, um, the Nephilim. Yeah, yeah. So, and there's a lot there's before a lot. Augustine about them being real. Yeah. And no, they are real. You get to the, I know, I believe you. Yeah, I'm just the Nephilim saying, are like, real. They're real. We should do a show on that one time because that, that stuff should. blows people's minds. It, like it, the six fingers, the six toes, being 10 feet tall, all this kind of stuff. You go through the depth of the church history on that. And it's like the whole weight of the church fathers believe the stories uh, of the Nephilim, um, you know, and uh, even when Christ is at Caesarea Philippi, you know, different translations will talk about it being the nether gloom, which is like this area in between the world where the Titans are in Greek mythology is very fascinating. Oh yeah. But the one, the one part where there's a really big mystery is how could the angelic beings procreate with the human beings? And this is kind of where you just kind of go, I don't know. But one of the things that he said, what I thought was fascinating and actually, John Henry Weston, mutual friend, I was talking to him about this at dinner last year. And he said, you know, we all thought in vitro fertilization was insane. And we weren't like, are they going to have a soul? Like, what's the issue here? So we can say that the Antichrist figure to come could definitely fool the world in, with technology or basically, you know, magic tricks. But this idea that the Satan, the spiritual being himself, could be incarnated is impossible. Right. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, Kennedy, we've talked, I want you to read my sword and serpent trilogy. I want you to narrate. We've talked about okay. it, but in that book, a key character in there is St. Christopher. And there is a tradition that St. Christopher, he was a giant who carried Christ across the water. That's why he has Christ on his back on your medals cool. of St. Christopher. But there's a tradition that he is a Nephilim yeah. redeemed. That'd be so cool. <laughs> that's how I depict him in the book. Because I believe in the that's Nephilim. Awesome. The Nephilim, yeah. by the way, everyone's asking, what's the Nephilim? The Nephilim oh, yeah. are these giants that are either possessed by demons, some say procreated, somehow. Um, you know, yeah. Thomas Aquinas, this is a little kind of gross. Uh, yeah. And maybe a little bit, uh, if you have young children, maybe skip ahead for now. But Thomas Aquinas talks about the succubus and the incubus. Yes. All right. Have you read this passage in Aquinas? Uh, actually, I listened to your podcast on it like okay. five years ago. Well, I got a podcast. I forgot that I did one, but I, apparently Kennedy says I got a podcast on this. So go on YouTube yeah. and check it out. But the succubus is a demon posing as a sexual female. And the yeah. incubus is a demon posing as a sexualized male. All right. Succubus and incubus. Succubus is a demon pretending to be a female. Incubus is a demon pretending to be the male. Thomas Aquinas says it's possible and perhaps has happened that you get a succubus who pretends to be a female who has a act of fornication with a man, mm-hmm. preserves his seed, yeah. right? And then turns into a, how would this work? I mean, it's super weird and complicated. Uh, then turns into an incubus and somehow artificially in, would artificially inseminate a woman as an incubus male appearing. So it's a, it's an in vitro weird thing happening on. He says that perhaps demons would be able to somehow transfer seed in that way. As Thomas Aquinas, 1200s. Uh, yeah. it's, it's kind of weird, but who knows, who knows, <laughs> right? Yeah. And I mean, <laughs> you go back in antiquity and you talk about, you know, the whole idea of Nephilim and, and Noah and the yeah. flood. I mean, if humans in 2022 can procreate children in glass dishes, mm-hmm. uh, demons from antiquity who are a lot smarter than us could do weird, gross stuff. So that's what this way they could at least fool you. They could at least fool you, right? Like, I mean, right. you know, it, it'd be, it could be irrefutable. That's like, no, I saw that. That's real. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yep. Yeah. 
Okay, so there's this one verse in St. Paul where he talks about the Antichrist as the man of sin, and then he calls yeah. him the son of perdition. And this has led some people to wrongly conclude that by saying, well, the Antichrist is called son of perdition, that means he's literally the son of Satan, because Satan is, he's perished, he's in perdition. But that doesn't necessarily mean that in Greek grammar, Latin grammar, or in English grammar. You know, I could say that that guy is a son of sloppiness, just means he's a really sloppy yeah. guy, right? So yeah. you can use son of, and we use, you know, son of a bee or whatever. It doesn't necessarily mean literally those things. By saying son of, you're just putting a profound association with the negative concept. And I yeah. think that's what St. Yeah, Paul's like, doing. Uh, well, so you could say so he's, he's a child of iniquity or something. I right. mean, it just means exactly. that you live an evil lifestyle. Exactly. Right? Yeah, so that's, I think that's going, but that confuses people because they see the word son of, and like, oh, that means he's the son of Satan, and they make that. Now, there are many quotes, and I put them throughout the book, that yeah, the tons. Antichrist will be born of illicit sex. In other words, he's not yeah. going to come from a nuclear family. There's going to be something wicked and perverted about his conception. We don't have the details, yeah. just that he's conceived in fornication, adultery, some kind of a perversion. And this kind of yeah. goes back, there's a section of the book where I talk about the Antichrist as being foreshadowed by King Solomon, son of David. Because King, the only other time 666 appears in the whole Bible is in reference to King Solomon, who annually receives 666 talents of gold which is Jewish currency, gold. And, of course, the number 666 is associated with buying and selling and this king who is a false messiah, etc. So King Solomon was also conceived in illicit sex. Remember Bathsheba? Yep. She was married to another man. Uh, she and David got together, conceived this, you know. So, yeah, there is that connection. And... The fathers state, and this is a great quote, I think kind of clarifies the whole thing. It's from St. John of Damascus on his book, The Orthodox Faith. And here's what he says about whether the Antichrist is the actual, literal, biological, somehow, incarnate. Yeah. It says this. But he becomes man as the offspring of fornication and receives all the energy of Satan. For God, right. foreknowing the strangeness of the choice that he would make, allows the devil to take up his abode in him. That's the Antichrist. He is, therefore, as we said, the offspring of fornic fornication, and he is nurtured in secret. And suddenly he rises up, rebels, and assumes rule. End quote. So, St. John Damascus says here, once again, that he will be the offspring, the son of fornication, and he will receive all the energy of Satan. And that Satan will take his abode in him. So this will be the most perfectly possessed person in the history of mankind. He will receive all the energy, the activity, the power. Any power that Satan has, it will be in this man, the Antichrist. And Satan will dwell in him perfectly. And there's this picture at the bottom of the screen. You can't see it uh, Kennedy, but the audience can see it. And a lot of people think this picture is Satan whispering into the ear of Jesus. That's not what it is. That is a painting of the Antichrist who resembles Christ with Satan whispering into his ear. This painting is showing, it's like an icon, that the Antichrist is perfectly possessed by Satan. Whatever Satan wants, the Antichrist will do. His will will perfectly mirror the devil, sadly. Yeah, um, the you, perfect possession is the key term. Um, I've heard exorcists talk about this and things. And, you know, we understand as Catholics, and many Protestants understand this as well, that magical things, occult, occult magic things are real. 
Uh, obviously, there is some supposed preternatural activity, which is a fraud. You know, uh, sometimes when you encounter these psychics and things, you're like, I, you live near a bank or a train track or a post office. And it's like <laughs> power lines. Like yeah, nine, power lines. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's, I'm seeing front lawns. I'm seeing front lawns, yeah. you know. Um, obviously, everybody, you know, that's a fraud. But then, you know, there are some pretty weird stuff that happen. Like, uh, you know, you go to a seance and you want to talk to your, your grandpa or something. Never go to a seance, by the way. But it's like, no, that's demons. You know, it's demons pretending to be your grandpa, whatever. And so by the way, real... your de- the demons know all about your grandpa. They may have that's watched right. his they're entire life. So you're like in the that's right. satanic seance and he's like... You know, I drove a 57 Chevy and I wrecked it against an oak tree. You know? And yeah, demons can see this yeah. stuff. They're going to say all this and they're going to trick you. And they are going to yes, possess exactly. you. Do not, by the way, commercial break, PSA, do not do Ouija boards. Do not do tarot cards. Do not do seances. Do not do astrology. Uh, what else do people do? Palm reading. Palm reading. This is Yoga. all wicked. Wicked. Yeah, don't do yoga. Don't do yoga. Um, yep. Yeah. It's not just stretching. If that, if, it's just stretching. Okay, go on your stretching, knees in front of stretch. the tabernacle. Why you want to call it yoga? Yeah, do the sign of the cross. That's like I want to. I want to spend 15 minutes stretch. rubbing beads. And you're like, uh, uh, it's <laughs> called praying the rosary. Like, no, I'm not Catholic. I just want to do it. Well, you just want to rub beads. Then you're not praying the rosary. So don't say I just want to stretch. I'm going to go do yoga. Yoga is a Hindu practice. If you're going to stretch, yeah. stretch. But if you're going to do yoga, you're doing a you're doing a liturgical act in a different religion. Do not do That's it. That's right. Don't do that. It's bad. Um, so perfect possession, though. Uh, it's conceivable. It's not just it's affirmed, but you know we haven't maybe we haven't recognized it. But somebody who is totally doing the will of of a preternatural being could do some crazy stuff. Um, and you know, um, Hugh Benson in his book, Lord of the world mm. is sort of a, a fictional portrayal of the end times. It's a lot of fiction. Like he didn't intend it to be taken as like a blueprint. He was sort of just using it as a way to talk about the motifs of the time in, in fiction. He was just a great author that way. Um, but the man that he shows as being this antichrist figure, um, I, always, I forget his name, but it's a Jewish name. And, um, and, uh, basically he's like a miracle worker in the sense that, uh, he just wins everything all the time. Like he somehow is able to go to like the, what would be the UN and broker peace between North and South Korea in a conversation, you know, right. like impossible. Like that's the miracle part of it because he's got this angelic intelligence. Um, you know, it's funny. <laughs> Somebody well, said, and not only uh, that Kennedy, but these yeah. world leaders who are maybe not perfectly possessed, but possessed by de- the devil or oppressed or under the influence of the devil, the Satan can play these guys like puppets on strings. You know, so when the yes. Antichrist, the Antichrist does come, he's going to be able to reconcile all these people because they're already given to the devil. Right? It's just getting everybody in line. The the, the Satan's just going to pull the strings and everything. We're going to have, quote unquote, world peace under the Antichrist. But it's going to be false. Yes, that's right. One of the things that you illuminate in the book, too, um, people will say, oh, the Pachamama, that's a sign of the Antichrist. Pope Francis is the Antichrist. Actually, no. As much as Pachamama is bad, um, there's no idolatry now under the Antichrist. Now, don't confuse my meaning saying Kennedy's doing apologetics for the Pachamama. No, <laughs> it's bad. Yeah. It's but it's not simple. idolatry. It's not the same thing. Commandment number one. So he'll be worshipped, right? Like, like the, you know, he will be the Messiah. He will convince people that he's the one. Like, basically, the he, the, the 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 Christian scriptures were off; they were a fraud. Yep. And essentially, now finally, because he's going to be promoting essentially the fulfillment of Judaism. And if that's the case, then there's going to be a temple. There's going to be um, monotheism, uh, and there's going to be one Messiah who's going to be the savior of mankind, and he'll, and he'll convince you that it's him. That's right. Yeah, a lot of people, yeah. do, they think that the Antichrist is going to unite all world religions, like an ecumenical meeting. Uh, that will be a precursor to the Antichrist. But if you read the Church yeah. Fathers, you read especially St. Jerome's commentaries on these. He's, and I, this is all in the book. Uh, 
he will outlaw all idols, all religions, everything. He will be an Israelite. He will be Jewish. That's unanimous in the church fathers. It's just a given, totally unanimous. And he will outlaw, he's not going to allow Buddha. He's not going to allow Jupiter or Zeus. He doesn't want any of that. He doesn't want anyone worshiping anyone but himself. The Antichrist, his end game will be every human on earth must worship me, the Antichrist, he wants to call himself the Antichrist, he'll call himself the Christ, will worship me, the Christ, every person on earth. And if you don't, you will be martyred. You will be destroyed. And that will be the final martyrs of the Catholic Church. Because it will be 100, because yep. think about it, Satan... Yes, he promotes idolatry, but idolatry is not his favorite thing. He would rather people kneel down and worship him instead of a rock yeah. or a statue. And that's what the Antichrist will seek to achieve in, his, in the full breadth of his power when he's taken over the whole world. Yeah, people will idolatry love it. is a means people to will love it. People will love it. Yeah. Well, they, they already do. They already do. I mean, you know, news of uh, Elon Musk going to buy Twitter again. In fact, I'm going to do the I told you so meme. I tweeted about 2 months ago that I said, "No, nah, he's going to he's going to force them to reveal the bots and either and probably get it at a lower price." And that's exactly what, that's he, did. what he did. You go to arbitration, you go to arbitration and all of a sudden, I mean, the guy literally tweeted a meme saying that and I was like, "He's telling you what he's doing. Come on, guys, he's still going to buy Twitter." Twitter is an amazing product for the search engine alone. I I predict, here's my end times prediction. I predict um, Twitter will be revamped under Musk to be a competitor to YouTube uh, because mm. the biggest difficulty in starting another video platform is the search engine. Right. Um, that's Rumble. Rumble's great, but it doesn't have it. Just it doesn't. It can't use Google. So you have to have like Twitter is almost like a Google. You search things on Twitter. It's very it's very efficient. Good so point. I think that'll be. That's what I think. Um, that's not in your book because that's just my opinion. <laughs> but one person said to me about Musk. He's like, oh, man, I hope Elon Musk isn't the Antichrist. And I was like, what? And then we were talking, and he said, no, he actually has all these characteristics. And I was like, oh, I mean, I don't think Elon Musk is. But ironically, a figure like that, who uh, basically works wonders, hyper-intelligent, somehow gets people to love him, takes control of things, kind of acts as like a pseudo-government. It could just be because he's a nice guy and he's very conscientious. I'm not imputing anything. But that's closer to what the Antichrist would look like as a world figure than like some wizard in a cult. Exactly. No, he, he yeah. will charm everyone. Like people say, Pope Francis, is the antichrist. I'm like, Pope Francis is not likable. Same with the Clintons. <laughs> They're not likable. People will, it'll be like Beatlemania or Elvis. People will yeah. be adoring the man. He will be so charming, so smart, so well-spoken, so peaceful, so spiritual, so everything that people will be falling all over themselves to adore this guy. He's going to be well loved. He's going to win the popularity contest. That is yeah. the Antichrist. It's going to be the perfect yeah. charm to deceive the world, even the elect, if possible. Uh, that's what it's going to. Yep. That's what it's going to look like, and it's going to be a complete cult of man. He's not going to be saying. Buddhism's cool. Go for Buddhism too. He's gonna be like, no, Buddhism's lame. Worship me. Look at everything I have done for the world. Look at what I've done for you. Look at my miracles, my signs, my wonders. Worship me, and people will be like, yeah, worship him. He is God. Yep. He is God. That's why those uh, those new atheists like Sam Harris has always creeped me out so much. Um, he's kind I don't of spiritual. Think he's the Antichrist. Well, he's spiritual, and he is very. Because this weird way of looking at you. I used to, you know, I used to be an agnostic, and I was trying to figure this thing out, right? So I'm looking at these videos of these atheists debating and stuff, and I remember listening to that guy, and I was like, "You're creepy, dude. Like, you're, you're almost kind of like you're kind of trying to trick us right now with all these sophisms, you know? Right. And there's there is no God in the way that the scriptures say it, but like you need to wake up to the religious sense. And I'm like, you kind of sound like the Antichrist, you right. know? Right. Yeah. And in the book, Lord of the World, I think he kind of, he doesn't get, in a lot of ways, he gets the Antichrist correct on a lot of these things. But on a couple of them, he misses out. Of course, he's writing a novel. You know, he's not writing a theological treatise. But 
that's one of the things is he's going to bring about world peace, the Antichrist. He's yep. going to be a religious leader. He's going to be loved and liked. And there's just going to be one of the interesting things in Lord of the World is they start renovating all the the churches and they start yes. hiring people to rewrite liturgies to orient it more towards the Antichrist cult. That will, I think, happen. I mean, you're going to see, yes, well, and false Catholics, false Christians, Jews, uh, Muslims, Buddhists, Hindus, all being like, well, actually, this guy sort of fulfills in a way everything we're already doing. Let's just incorporate him into it. And then the gravitational pull will just be all worship of the Antichrist. Well, and what what this this brings us to a point that's really important as well. What religion cult in is used in Lord of the World? It's Freemasonry. Right. Um, because if there ever were going to be a cult that would be lockstep with what is possible with the Antichrist, it would be Freemasonry. Uh, and what is Freemasonry based off of? Pause. What's their general? Yeah, their central analogy well, I mean, motif. It's, it's, it's the, the worship of the architect, the yes. great architect. The architect and it's, and it's, in relation to Solomon's temple. That's exactly right. So Solomon, that, right? I've so already said, is an Antichrist figure, 666 in the Old Testament. But also the temple is going yes. to be a huge focus of the Antichrist. St. Paul says, and it's also in the book of Revelation, he will be enshrined in Jerusalem in a temple, a rebuilt yeah. temple. And Freemasonry is obsessed with architecture and the rebuilding of Solomon's temple. Yep. All these things a false Judaism and this Freemasonic ideal are going to come together for the worship of man as God. And it's going to be not Jesus Christ, our Lord, true God, and true man. It's going to be this false antichrist. There's this whole um, school of Freemasonic. Again, back when I used to be an agnostic, I was listening to Joe Rogan, who is basically pagan pretend philosopher at this point, but he you know, he's um, kind of, I've, I listen to him still. To him, like DMT and hallucinogenics is religion. No, I'm serious. I mean, I know. I know. And I, I know. think he would actually admit that. He thinks that if you just like smoke weed, do DMT, mushrooms, you'll get enlightened and you'll be kinder and you'll see a spiritual yeah. world. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. He used to, I, I mean, he's talked about that for years. But one time he actually had a guy who was a professed Freemason on and he didn't know that he was a Freemason. It was about sacred geometry. Okay. Uh, I haven't listened to it. Like, I've listened to The Odd. You know, he has some major guest on talking about some topic you can't talk about on YouTube. And it's like, okay, I'll tune in to see what this guy has to say, right? Just, you know, whatever, write an article on it for LifeSite or something. But I used to listen to him, like, every day back until 2015 or something. And he had this guy on talking about sacred geometry. And I was unformed. Like, I was a non-practicing sort of attending mass sometimes, sort of Catholic, trying to find my way. And uh, it was very compelling. He weaved together this mm. yarn about history and about the stars and the directions of the, you know, the, the poles and things and like whatever. And I actually looked it up, sacred geometry, and it started going down the rabbit hole of like what Freemasonry is. I never continued searching. It. But the point is, is that it was obsessed with physically building a sacred structure that would be like the pinnacle of God's cre of, of it's almost like a tower of Babel in a sense, right? Yeah. It's all these errors uh, brought out again. Yeah. yeah. And, and the antichrist we know is going to rebuild the temple. And this is one of the odd things about evangelical Protestants, Kennedy is you talk to them. They're like, we got to help the Jews rebuild the temple. We got to give them money, <laughs> write a check for a thousand bucks, give it to the non-believing Jews who deny Jesus Christ, they got to rebuild the temple. And it's like, are you guys aware that the rebuilding of the temple is the sign of the coming of the Antichrist who is going to kill all of us, torture us, yeah. and then kill us? And I show in this new book, Antichrist and Apocalypse, the martyrs of the last age, the last three and a half years of the tribulation, they will be the most glorious martyrs. They will make the martyrs of the Roman persecution look like child play. The persecution yeah, will be crazy. deep. What will happen is you'll have the two witnesses, Enoch and Elijah, or Henoch and Elias. They will return, because they both of them have not died. 
they will return and preach. Henoch to the Gentiles, Elias to the Jews, and begin yep. a mass reversion to the Catholic Church. And this yep. will provoke the Antichrist to wage war on the Catholic Church, upon Christians, and there will be mass persecution. It's called the Great Tribulation. Christ calls it the Great Tribulation. He says, when you see the abomination of desolation standing in the holy place, that is, when you see the Antichrist in Jerusalem, in the temple, that's it. That's it. Well, that brings us to another... People bring up this term Great Tribulation. They also bring up this term Great Apostasy. Mm. And, oh boy, here you go. Uh, I know where you're going. Well, huh. people will say we're in a Great Apostasy now. Um, we're in definitely in a prefigurement. We have been in a prefigurement of a Great Apostasy. I it would admit we could a, be in it. We could be in it. We but, could be yeah, in it. We could be in it. The only thing I would add, though, is, and, and maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong, it seems in reading the Antichrist literature that the great apostasy, would it follow the massive reversion, or would it be before that? Well, so you've got in Catholic private revelation, and I, I cover yeah. this in, as you know, Kennedy, in Antichrist and Apocalypse, the Holzhauser, yeah. you know. That's right. Uh, what would you call it? The epoch, seven, seven The seven phases, the seven epochs. And so one way of reading it is you have a mass apostasy. Then you have this appearance of an antichrist figure. And then you have Enoch and Elijah. And then you have three years of three and a half years of horrible persecution. And then Christ returns. Yeah. Private revelation. Um, for example, private revelation regarding the three days of darkness, Holzhauser, etc. They say, you have a time of Babylonian captivity of the church where the church becomes so weak, almost ceases to appear on earth. This is almost like the eclipse of the church yeah. that Bishop Athanasius Schneider talks about. Yeah, and then that. in that moment when it looks like, man, Catholicism is just over, it's lost, there is this great moment. So there's a minor chastisement. And there's this great moment where you have the Holy Pope and the great monarch. And they are very similar to basically the Messianic prince and the high priest returning from Persia after the Babylonian captivity. You can read that in the books First and Second Ezra's, also known as Ezra and Nehemiah in the canonical Old Testament. These two return back and they inspire a rebuilding of Jerusalem and a rebuilding of the temple. So the same idea in the Old Testament moves into the New Testament in the Catholic Church where you have a great monarch, French monarch, a holy pope, they have this council, and Catholicism converts the whole world. Yep. It takes over for finally all the nations, not just medieval France and the Holy Roman Emperor and medieval you know, Spain and Italy, but the entire world, China, Russia, South America, Africa, all those nations. It's like a Constantine all over again. And then after that period... People grow lax, they grow lukewarm, and then the Antichrist emerges as that little horn, and that signals the end times. That's uh, Blessed Holzhauser, and I give you his quotes, in his, I give you a graph, and explain everything, how he lays it out in context with the seven seals in the book of Revelation, yeah. the seven trumpets, and then the seven plagues. That's the 21 events that happened, and Holzhauser has a way of seeing that. Holzhauser was a Catholic priest. He didn't claim that he came up with this on his own. He came, He said he got this in a vision. So you either believe him yeah. or you don't. I'm well uh, open to it, but I'm not betting yeah. everything on it. I find it interesting. Well, and you show in the book, and by the way, for those who are into audiobooks, we did work around some of the infographic parts in a way where I narrate them so that you can see them in your mind's eye the way that I say it. So even if you're thinking, okay, this is a reference book, uh, trust us, we, we, we definitely worked it around that it flows, even though right. it's an, an informative yeah, there book was lots as well. Of charts um, in the book, as you can see here. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then that was one of the things Kennedy and I were talking about. It's like, well, do you want me to skip the chart? You want me to, and, and Kennedy did a good job coming up with sort of a way to help the audio 
visualize it. So, yeah. So you can now, get either one. Offer... You, can get the, you can get the print version. You can get the Kindle version. You can get the Audible version. You can get all of them. Look at them all at the same time. <laughs> there you go. Now, I did offer, uh, there's a song, is it the um, Veni Creato Spiritus in the back of the book? And I said, I can sing that for you if you want, Taylor. But you said, no, you don't have to. I offered so out of that. I didn't. <laughs> Not that I don't trust your singing voice. I was just like, I, if people want the, there's a lot of appendices in this book. Um, and right. one of them was the Veni Creator. And I was like, people can Google it. They can find it. They can. But you know yeah. what? I, actually, and, now that we're doing the show, it would have been kind of legit. We could have been like, there's a vocal performance <laughs> at the end of the book, a surprise. And then people would be excited. We should have done it, actually, now that I think about it. Oh, well. We'll oh, do well. second Next edition time. one day. Next time. Yeah. Well, Kennedy, thanks for reading the book. Um those of you watching, I hope you uh, are intrigued, and I hope you will check out the book. Uh, it's already a number one in like four categories. And uh, the Audible, let's see if we got here. Yeah, there it is. It's on Amazon. The Audible is doing great. It was, uh, oh, good. It was one of the top. I can't remember what number it was on all Audible. Um, Excellent. But I went into Author Central, and it was like, this is a leading book on the Audible. So... And I already have heard from people who are listening through the Audible and they love it. So good job on that, Kennedy. That's awesome. Yeah. It's yeah. Good. And um, we're gonna we're gonna get on Sword and Serpent. Hopefully have that yeah, out let's do sooner it. rather than later as well. Let's do yeah. it. Um, I do want to take a moment here. People are asking for signed copies, and so the way that we are doing that is I'm sending out. Let me see if I got a picture here. I'm sending out signed copies via Patreon. So I put together a bundle and this morning I spent an hour signing books because people are already getting interested and, and all that. So I, I, I got to go down and probably spend another hour signing because people want the signed versions and it's going to be this month. So um, you go to patreon.com forward slash DR Taylor Marshall. I'm sending a package. My book Rosary in 50 pages signed mm -hmm. Thomas Aquinas in 50 pages signed. And the new book, Antichrist and Apocalypse, signed, and I'm putting in a nice rosary in there and maybe something else as a thank you. So uh, you can find that package at patreon.com forward slash my name, Dr. Taylor Marshall, patreon.com forward slash Dr. Taylor Marshall. And that's been a huge hit already. Uh, it's going to last till November 2nd. So if you want to get the signed book, the new book, and get two other books signed with the rosary as a thank you, go to patreon.com forward slash DR Taylor Marshall. All right. Well, that's a wrap. Should we pray Hail Mary together? Sure. Let's do it. You want to do the second half, Kennedy? Sure. All right. Oremus nomini patris et fidi, spiritus sancti. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena dominus tecum. Benedicta tu in molieribus et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et in hora mortis nostre. Amen. Saint Joseph, terror of demons, pray for us. Nomini Patris et Fidi et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. You know, Cain, that's one thing about the book of Revelation, the Apocalypse, is right in the middle. If you took the whole book of Revelation and you threw a dart right in the middle of the book, who's there? Our Virgin Lady, Mary. the Virgin Mary, the Theotokos. And it's one of the most powerful theological, no, it is the most powerful theological depiction of the Blessed Virgin Mary in the New Testament. You take yeah. what you're going to read in this book or from the church fathers or from the medievals about Revelation chapter 12, the Apocalypse chapter 12 about Our Lady. I mean, you've got every Marian dogma there. You've got her power against Satan. You've got her relationship with St. Michael. Um, it's called, she's called the mother of those who follow Jesus, her divine motherhood of Christ, her motherhood of us, the church. I mean, it's all there, Our yeah. Lady. And every private revelation about the end times is rich with Marian devotion and Marian spirituality. And that's why we got to say right now, pray the rosary every single day. If you don't yeah, pray the rosary, what team. happens, Kennedy? You're not on the team. You're not on the team. You're not on the team. You got to be on the team. Pray your rosaries. Pray your pray rosary them. every day. 
Oh, by the way, I am giving away a Seraphim Rosary on Friday, which is Feast of Our Lady of Rosary. I wish you could see this, Kennedy. It's super masculine, even though it looks a little baby blue in real life. Oh, looks... And it's from Seraphim Rosaries. Um, I think it's like almost $500. It's super oh nice, all hand done. I will be giving this away to Patreon people on Friday, October 7th. If you want to be in the running, go to patreon.com forward slash D.R. Taylor Marshall. I'll also send you signed books. That's a wrap. Also, go check out Kennedy on YouTube. What's your YouTube, Kennedy? Yeah. The, Ke- the Kennedy Report. And um, I think Steve Bannon has a copy of Terror of Demons. A mutual friend of mine got it to him. So, Good. Steve, if you're watching, don't feel afraid to shout out. Yes. <laughs> Just give me a call. Do it. Do it. That's what Steve Bannon said yesterday. He's like, man, I was doing politics and economics, and now we're having to like wade into religious Faith topics because like the world's getting so bad. Yeah, and you know? he's talking about ma- it's ma- ma- male issues. I know him and Jack Pasolik have talked about yeah. masculinity stuff. So it's yeah, their alley, yeah. So yeah, go to Kennedy yeah. Report on YouTube. Uh, Kennedy's book. Let me put it back on the screen again. Is Terror of Demons. There it is, right there. Terror of Demons. You get it on YouTube. Have you narrated it yet? <sighs> No, it's with Tan. I'm in talks. There was supposed to be someone doing it. It didn't oh, work. Okay. So now we're talking about doing it now. So Okay. Very good. Very good. Yep. All right, Kennedy. Great to talk with you, everybody. Thanks for watching. God bless you. And remember, our Lord Jesus Christ is the light of the world and the salt of the earth. So go out there and be salty. God bless. Godspeed. Kennedy Hall, thank you so much.